All right, guys. John DePass here. Welcome to week number six of our six weeks to success. This is our last week. This is my last week of actually producing a webinar for you. I want to thank everyone who's participated in the program with me, uh, with us. And I'm grateful for everyone to, for following through with the six week course and uh, for you and for me. It has been a fantastic experience in that for me, when I say things and share things to you and with you, it makes me accountable to you guys. And uh, that is extraordinarily valuable to me. You know, for the last 36, 37, 38 days now, I've been, you know, 100% tuned into my diet and to my exercise and to my focus and to all of the things that I'm preparing for the messages. So I'm studying, I'm practicing, I'm meditating daily because I'm trying to share those messages with you. So moving through the 42 days, what is it? Seven times six, 42 days, six weeks to success, you know, makes me be right on my game for 42 days. And, you know, I owe that to you guys. So that's so extraordinarily valuable to me. My life jumps ahead because I'm so focused and I'm so diligently working and I'm eating so well. So I'm alkalizing my body. So my body's healing that much more. So thank you so much for participating in the program and, and making me move forward. It's been wonderful. So tonight's our last night. I will be reaching out to you guys over email to gather some feedback from you about the program. I will be sharing more emails with you this week to support some of the things I'll be talking about tonight and to bring everything to a conclusion that I make sure that I leave you with some valuable tidbits and hints and things and, and support you moving forward. And, and, uh, and I have an intention now to do another six week course. It won't be right now, but it will be coming up in the next 30 to 60 days, I imagine. So you can stay tuned for that if you like this program. You may uh, have an interest in my next one, uh, your very best self, which will be coming out again, which will just be a, a, a further continuation of uh, more lessons and more truths about uh, creating your best, best self and your best life. So moving on with the content tonight, I think I've got to touch on this idea, the quantum theory. This idea is just approaching 100 years old now. The quantum theory started right at the turn of the 18th, the 19th century, 1900, 1899, 1901, 1902. The quantum theory was just coming into reality then and uh, made a giant leap around 1920, around that point. So we're, we're coming up to 100 years since the quantum theory really burst onto the world scene. So now the quantum theory is not something that is up for debate. The quantum theory is accepted, readily proven. It, it is truth. And the quantum theory, although it's 100 years old, like some of the other things that I've shared with you in this program, it's still not understood. I don't know how many people on the call tonight understand what the quantum theory is, but I think it's necessary for me to give you a, 
like a brief overview of the quantum theory. And you probably have heard bits and pieces of it, but maybe you don't realize how valuable and important this is to you and to your life. Not even the fact that your mobile device and all of the Wi-Fi and all of the technology and everything that we're doing right now comes from a lot of the, a lot of this information. And we evolved around the same time. Nikola Tesla was at the same time. This is um, Einstein, the quantum theory. 1920 was when Einstein got involved in the quantum theory. And what was going on at this time was um, these physicists were studying light. They were studying energy. And what was going on in the 1900s to the 1920s is up until the 1920s, I believe it was, light was always considered a wave. And somewhere around there, 1910, 1920, somebody, whether it was Einstein or if it was Max Planck or there was Borg, there was another physicist. I don't remember you know, the history that closely, but I will pull out some information and share it with you this week for sure because I wanna confirm some of the stuff. I'm speaking loosely off the top of my head here because I have studied this, but it's been a while. But what happened was they were, they were studying light energy and all of the scientists thought that, that light was a wave. And there was numerous scientists that had demonstrated through physical study, theoretical study, through mathematical study, that light was a wave. And somewhere between 1900 and 1920, some scientists were starting to develop uh, some, some abilities now to actually work with electrons. We were able to make uh, studies that were so minuscule and so You know, microscopic, that we could actually study an electron and we could actually fire an electron across the room and watch what it does. So we were taking energy and, and actually moving it at this point, 1900 to 1920. And by doing this, some scientists were now able to demonstrate theoretically scientifically, physically, in a study in a laboratory now, because we could actually work with particles at microscopic level now, that light was a particle. And so the entire scientific community was up in arms. This was huge. Half of the scientists believed that light was a wave and half of the scientists believe that life was a part of, light was a particle and they couldn't come up with an answer. So they, they were doing numerous studies to try and demonstrate. So they're using an electron and they're firing it through a hole. And when they fired the electron through the hole, it left a mark on the other side. So they were firing an electron at a, at a wall and the wall had a little hole in it. And when the electron went through the hole, it would leave a mark on the other side on the wall. Now, when they cut two holes in the board and they fired the electron, what they noticed is the electron behaved like a wave. And this was causing some confusion. When they had one hole, it acted like a particle. When there was two holes, it acted like a wave. So they were confused. So what they decided to do was they put some sort of device that was on, the, on one hole to determine what was happening to the electron when it came through. 
And what they realized was when they actually put a device to measure what the electron was doing, that the electron behaved differently. Almost as if the electron had consciousness. And that may not seem like a big deal, but it is really an enormous deal, if you really think about it, is that energy has consciousness. And what they determined from the quantum theory was whatever the theorist was searching for, the theorist would find. So if the theorist was, the physicist was looking for light is a wave, they would find light is a wave. And if the theorist was looking for light is a particle, the theorist would find light is a particle. This is so important because it demonstrates that whatever you're seeking, you will find. And whatever you truly believe, you will find. And this is why everyone can live in their own boundary. And that is their boundary. And that is why you've got doctors of all different kinds having different theories and different reasons. And that's why if you listen to one doctor, he'll tell you one theory. If you listen to another doctor, you'll find another theory because they all have different ways of explaining what's going on in reality. And that is their reality. The point here is that the power to choose is within each individual. The power to choose is within you. And that's what I think the quantum theory is saying from 100 years ago, and that idea is still not really understood, that you create your reality. So as long as you believe you need meat, or you need that medication, or you need that cooked food, or you need that alcohol, or you need that coffee, or you need that drug, or you need that sleep, or you need that thing, as long as you believe that, that is your reality and your limitation. As long as you believe you need that B12 or you need that vitamin or you need that water that comes from the tap and it's healthy and you believe that, as long as you believe that, that is your reality. And as long as you stay stuck in your current outlook of reality, then that is your limited belief. If you want to change your reality, you have to change your current beliefs. If you want a different outcome in your life, you've got to change the way you think and look at your life. Change the way you look at things and things will begin to change. Okay? It's your choice to stay just as you are, or to try something new. I can't make you change your mind, right? Um, I can only share from my experience, and the reason why I've been so you know, affected and changed by what I've seen and learned is that I did wholeheartedly follow the mainstream approach for 30 years. I did follow competitive bodybuilding and dieting and followed the protein and the fats and the vegetables, and I was still filled with pain in my body, pain in my life. And it was growing that pain. And so I knew that I was doing something wrong. And as soon as I was asking and looking for what was right, the answer appeared. So to me, I was asking and looking for the answer and it appeared to me, it was given to me. So for me, I just knew it was the right timing. And then when I read it and it was like a totally different idea, I was like, 
this is why. And it explained it to me. So for me, I, I was immediately transformed by the information. If you're not living with a lot of pain, if things are pretty good for you, if you know, you're kind of cruising through life and you know, things aren't really bothering you, then maybe it's not the right time for you. Maybe you're not ready to make a change. You know, change happens when you're seriously ready. When it kind of has to happen, that's when it does. That's when you make a choice. That's when you make a decision. And you wholeheartedly commit and you follow through with something. And in the process of following through, you learn and you grow. And you realize that you have this power inside of you. And through practice, through throwing those punches, 300, 500, 1,000 punches a day, by practicing diligently in the morning and in the night, by focusing on your goals, like every other top thought coach on this planet will tell you, by clearly defining what you want to create, you bring it into your reality right which the different message from the mainstream and what everyone else is talking about you know you got to get more money you got to work more you got to buy more cars and have a bigger house and get more things that's what society's telling us you got to get that steak and you got to get that pasta and you got to drink that bottle of wine and you got to get the best coffee and you got to drink it all day because that's what joy and happiness is. Joy and happiness is not something outside of you. You've heard this before. What does it mean? It means you've got to get into the spirit of joy and happiness that's within you. There's only one way to do that. That means getting the toxic elements out of your life settling your mind down on your truth. So this is the root cause of all of our problems. Inflammation. This is what's causing our body fat, our weight gain. This is what's causing our sickness, our illness, our disease, our heart disease, our diabetes our cancer, depression, anxiety, physical pain. This is, this is what's at the root of all of it. We're all um, chronically inflamed. And if we don't do something about it, it's going to get worse. Now the, the inflammation is caused because there's something toxic that's entered the system. Something that's not supposed to be within the skin is inside the skin. It's gotten in there. Whether it's been injected in or ingested or drank, somehow we've put something into the body that wasn't supposed to be in there. So now the body starts creating white blood cells to combat the toxic element. And in the combat, tissue is damaged and inflammation is the result. So we're putting in toxic foods. Those toxic foods are blocking up our, our, our uh, lymphatic system, spilling over into our capillary beds, our lymphatic beds. The cells and the tissues are being soaked with toxicity. The response is inflammation, mucus. Mucus is the inflammatory response. We, we create pus, we get inflamed. This is what happens when something toxic, toxic is inside of our system. We, we create pus, we create phlegm. When we've got pus and phlegm in our system, our body can't digest or absorb food properly. So our nourishment can't come in, can't be absorbed. However, we keep thinking that we need to get more. It's not get more that we need. We need to get the inflammation and the toxicity out of the system. That's what we need. 
We need to calm down the inflammation that's in the body. We need to stop the tissue damage that our white blood cells is creating because we keep filling our bodies with toxicity. We need to remove the toxicity. That's what we need. We need to remove the obstructions and the truth and the energy that is our health and our truth that is within us will be free. What can we do about it? What can we do? What can we add to the program this week to finish off our final six weeks and make sure that we're doing everything that we can to reach towards success? This is six weeks to creating total success. We've learned about fasting. Hopefully you've extended that fast. Hopefully you've seen the value of fasting. It's been around for thousands of years. It's in every single culture. Fasting is where you learn how to manage your food. Not by eating food. It's by not eating food. That's how you'll learn how to manage food. The new thing this week will be dry fasting. Dry fasting is staying empty and not drinking water. I'd like to encourage you to try that. Dry fast, 14 hours at least, 16 hours at least. Can you press it out this week? Can you try one day where you go 16 plus 18 hours, 20 hours, 24 hours without water or food? Is it possible? I've done 65 hours a couple of times. I'm not saying to do 65 hours. I'm just suggesting maybe you'll try 20 maybe 24, dry, it's possible. Once you do it, you realize you can do it. The benefit of the dry fast is this. The inflammation in your body is mucus and phlegm. That's what inflammation is. That's the inflammatory response. Mucus, phlegm, pus, right? All of this stuff is fluid. At its root, mucus, phlegm, and pus are mostly fluid. Right? So when we dry fast, we cut off the inflammatory response. When we cut the water out for a day, or two days, or three days, we cut off inflammation. And in the process of doing that, we realize some deeper truths about ourselves. Once we get that inflammation stopped, even if we just stop it for a day or two or three, by kind of impeding it without water, we get a kind of false illusion of what it would be like to be without inflammation. And that gives you a little idea of what your life would be without inflammation. You'll see and feel that. So I'd like you to experience that. And that's why we're including a dry fast. If possible, I, I encourage you to go for it. Distilled water, a no brainer. Should be doing it now. If you're not yet, hopefully. We'll start that. It's absolutely a must. It's the only clean water. You must have it. You must drink it. The only way you get distilled water is from sunlight. That's how we get clean water is from sunlight. You get distilled water in fruits and vegetables. It's been distilled by photosynthesis. It's created into our fruits and our vegetables. So the sun cooks the water which comes down as rain, evaporates the water, makes it come down as rain, or the sun cooks the water into the fruits, makes it into fruits and vegetables. It's the sun. It's the light and the energy of the sun that we must drink with distilled water or we must eat from the fruits and the vegetables. It's light energy. It's sun energy. It's the same energy that Borg and Planck and Einstein were studying at the turn of the century. The turn of the century, the same time, when Dr. Eret was healing people, 
all happened at the same time. Electromagnetic, that's what they were studying, electromagnetic energy. That's the same energy that's in the fruits, electromagnetic energy. It's electromagnetic energy that's in the fruits and vegetables. The highest electromagnetic energy is in the fruits and vegetables. We are the highest electromagnetic beings. We are the highest electric beings on this planet. We need to eat the highest electromagnetic food. We have to eliminate the toxic elements. The toxic elements are the meats. They're not alive. They're dead. You can't manufacture live cells out of dead tissue. Dead tissue is toxic. It's acidic. Your body creates white blood cells. It's fighting against the animal protein that you're putting in. You're putting a toxin into your body. The sooner you realize this and minimize it, and eliminate it, sooner you're going to get the maximum results. If you have to, eat meat at dinner, try to eat fruits and vegetables during the day. Or if you have to, or if you can, save meat for the weekends. Make it your weekend treat. You know, if you can reduce it, if you have to use meat or animal products, how about goat cheese or goat milk? There's a great animal protein if you have to. Don't use dairy, it comes from a cow. 700 pounds. You don't need to be 700 pounds. It's filled with, with hormones. Don't, don't use that. Use the goat milk. It's a smaller being. If you have to use an animal's milk, use, it, use goat milk. Okay? If you can, um, you know, feta cheese. If you, if you have to, that, that's, that'd be the one. If you have to. Otherwise, save the meat for the weekend. Enjoy it on the weekend if you must. Try to keep your alcohol, if you can keep your caffeine on the weekend, those are all toxic elements. Reduce the toxic elements, reduce the inflammation in your body. It's your body, you'll feel a thousand percent better when you start taking care of your health. That's all there is to it. You know, you have to choose the truth. Like, the quantum theory says, you have to choose. If you want to continue to choose the same truth you've been currently choosing, your life's going to stay the same. If you want to change, you got to jump off the train you're on, get on another train. Okay? you got to get on that raw foods, alkaline, astringent train. The alkaline food's going to reduce the acidity in the lymphatic system. As you reduce that acidity, those cells are going to feel the joy of getting that mucus out from under them and around them. That plaque is going to break up from the astringent effects of those fruits. That fluid's going to get back in the lymphatic system. It's going to go out. Your kidneys are going to start um, filtering again. You're going to urinate that waste out. Your fecal matter is going to leave your body. You're going to lose 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 pounds of fecal waste that's stuck in your system that's causing pain and disease in your body. Alkaline, alkalize your body, Stringe, astringent fruits will help you eliminate the toxicity. Raw foods, you've got to do it. High fiber foods, pectin's going to get that fecal matter out. Hydrating foods, all your fruits and vegetables, your grapes, coconut water, straight from the coconut, not the coconut water that's pasteurized, that's inside those cans. I used to drink it in error, Myself, you got to take the coconut, you got to break it open. That's the coconut water you got to drink. The melons, the highest vibration fruits. The melons, I'm the melon man. You got to eat the melons. The citrus, the next. Then it's the grapes. They have citrus in the grapes. Apples, pears are next. And then your sweet fruits, your bananas, your mangoes. A little bit less healing as you move up less electromagnetic energy, less hydration. The most hydrated, the coconut, just nothing but fluid inside of that thing. The most energy healing, uh, the highest vibration. It's, it's in a tree that, that you can't even reach it. It's such a high vibration, such a high energy food. It's way up above, right? All of those high energy foods are baked and cooked in the sunlight. 
start to look into the sun. Looking into the sun is so magically healing for your body. You can ask a thousand people what the reason is those that do look into the sun. You'll, have, you'll hear a thousand different answers. Some will give you a spiritual answer. Some people say spiritual answers are poo-poo or woo-woo or they're not important or they have no value. So that is what you say. That's your opinion. You know, you live by your opinions and you're stuck in your limited beliefs. Some people say it's because of the vitamin D. You know, that's the doctors. That, that's value because it's a doctor. That's your opinion. If that's your opinion, that's fine. It doesn't matter to me what your opinion is. I'm just suggesting you start doing this. If you can look at the sun when it's low in the sky, just when it comes up. Right now, getting up, it's like at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. If you can get it between 7 and 9, if you can look into the sun. If you're just getting started with this, a minute or two, you know, they say just 10 seconds and build it up 10 seconds each day. That's what the recommendation is. I think it's very conservative. I don't want to recommend something beyond that. However, I have gone beyond that. I've also looked at the sun later into the day and, and I've gotten a sunspot in my eye from looking at the sun too high. It passes, nothing to worry about. Passes in a day or two, you get a spot in your eye and kind of stays in your eye and you kind of blocks your, your vision for a day or two, but it passes. It's nothing, nothing to be worried about. But don't look at, your, look at the sun when it's way up in the sky. If it's way up in the sky and it's the time when I get to look at it, I kind of put it behind a tree. I look, look through a tree. That's how I do it. I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting for you to look at the sun when it's in the first two hours of the day or at the end of the day when the sun's coming down. Look at the sun then. You can spend two minutes or three minutes or five minutes. Build it up. Ten minutes. I'll tell you, when you get to 20 minutes and 25 minutes, the sun has healing power. It will help you detoxify and heal very quickly, very quickly, rapidly. Add the sun. People will leave parts of my program out. I can't make you do it. I encourage you to do it because it will help you. Okay? Grounding is another one. Um, you know, it's cold outside right now. Maybe too cold to uh, take your shoes off and go barefoot, but taking your shoes off and going barefoot is awesome. If you can't do that, you could just put your hands on a tree or on something that's grounded into the earth, uh, a bush, uh, some leaves, grab a branch, grab a tree, get your hands on the ground on a tree. Grounding. There's scientific evidence that it raises your circulation. There's scientific studies about this. The ground has magnetic energy. That's what the fruits get, mag magnetic energy from the ground and electric energy from the sunlight. Electromagnetic, that's what we are. We're electromagnetic beings, beings of the earth and beings of the sun, beings of the light and beings of the earth, okay? We need to eat foods that support this. Duality. We are both male and female, positive and negative, alkaline and electric, electric and magnetic. Everything is dual. Everything is two sides. There's two sides, good and bad. It's not good or bad. It's good and bad. Both are good. How long should you do this? Well, I've been doing it for about 10 months and I'm healing and healing more and more and more daily, weekly, new things I notice, less pains, better sleep, more clarity, more focus, more certainty, more confidence, more power, more energy, more abilities, more balance, more love, more awareness, more clarity. Keep going. Um, you know, as you move through it, you get, you get, you get further into it. You learn more about it. You understand it more deeply. Uh, you'll grow in it. Do it to this degree for a while and then go a little further. Add something new. Add the sunlight. Add the grounding. If you don't want to give up your meat, add the sunlight. Add the grounding. The sun will help you overcome your cravings. 
It will help you. I promise you. I'm not just saying it. It's the truth. Uh, do it for 30 days. Do it for 60 days. Do it for 90 days. And see what you think. You've done it for 42 days now? Maybe. I hope. Maybe you've done it wholeheartedly for 30 days. I'm not sure how long you've done it. But give it a good, honest try for 30 or 60 days. See what you think then. But really, give it a try. I can't make you do it. But if you try it and you really experience it, then I think that you will realize the truth that's buried in here for you. I don't believe there's any coincidences. I don't believe in any coincidences. I believe you've been given and shared this message for a reason. Whether or not it's the right time for you to receive it, I'm not sure. But you've heard the message, so if it's not the right time now, you'll hear it again. The next time, maybe you'll receive it. I've done my part. I've done all that I can to share as much about this as I can. It is my job. In my opinion, in my opinion, you know, I made a decision when I was 13. I made a decision that, you know, I was picked on, I was small and I was gonna work out. I decided then I was gonna commit my life to getting bigger at that point. I made that decision at 13, I'm 46 in a couple of months. I made that decision 33 years ago. That decision led me here to share this important message with you. In my opinion, it's decisions that change our lives. And it's, a, it's making a new decision that's going to change yours. In my opinion, it's not right or wrong or good or bad. The decision I made when I was 13 that I needed to be more than I was was good and bad. It's led me here. It's taught me much. But it didn't go in a straight line. And that decision was good and bad. The idea that I needed to be more than I was led me here, but it also led me along some really wiggly paths. Thinking I needed to be more than I was led me into steroids, anabolic drugs, street drugs, stimulants, hormones, sexual addictions and promiscuity, um, food issues, attachments to protein, attachments to cooked food, attachments to vitamins and supplements, and all sorts of things that I had to overcome. But going down those wiggly wrong paths and corridors bad things helped me to see the truth and find the truth and know the truth when I stepped onto it. Seeing the darkness so clearly being stuck and lost in darkness helped me to recognize the truth. There is no good and there is no bad. You know, I've studied religion deeply. I was, I've, I've taken Christianity deeply to the nth degree, where I was reading the Bible every day and praying every single day and fasting and memorizing the text and reciting the words. I've been a Christian like that. And I've also followed the Buddha as deeply as that for a couple of years too. So I've done my spiritual work and I've done my spiritual due diligence. And what I see from following the Christian message and following the Eastern message, both for years, meditating for 20, 15, I don't know, 15, 17 years now. What, what, I, what I know from both sides is I see the common thread that's in both. You know, the Christians talk about the flesh, 
and say, saying you got to stay away from the flesh and you got to be more of the spirit. The flesh is the wants and the desires of man, the money, the material things, the drugs, the sex. Joy from outside of the self. Happiness is outside of you. And the Christian, the Christian message is, you know, find the spirit and love of God inside. The Buddhist message, craving and desire is the problem of the human, the problem of man. Cravings, desires. It's your addictions and your cravings, your wants and your desires that's blocking you from joy and happiness. Find the joy and happiness within. The message is the same. To me, it doesn't matter. There is no good, there is no bad, there is no right, there is no wrong. I can be speaking to a man of Islam. I can be speaking to a mediator. I love you just the same. I still say the same message to you. I've deeply studied the religious text. I've deeply studied the great philosophers and thinkers of today, the world leaders, the thought leaders, the coaches. And it's my opinion that if you are in a religion, you know, God bless you. That's great. But don't lose sight of the power that's within you. Don't only pray to God outside of you. Recognize that you are a piece of God inside of you. And if you've turned your back on religion and you're an atheist and you don't believe in God, you don't think there's anything of value there, I'm saying to you, come to the spirit message as well too. See that the spirit and the power is within you and the power to change is within you. And you have that power and you direct that power with your choice, with your words, with your focus. You can change and heal your life. This is a world of duality, not a world of right and wrong. Some of the wrong decisions I made taught me the most valuable things. You want to reduce your body fat. You want to heal your pain if you want to change your life. Alkalize your body. Remove toxicity from your body. This is my opinion. What I've found that if you want to change your life, you got to think about what you're putting out. Whether you are a Christian, and you've got the golden rule, whether you've got that Eastern philosophy of karma, they both say the same thing to me. Put out what you want to get back. This is the important message. Put out what you want to have back. The energy that you are sharing with the people that are around you is what's coming back to you. The thought energy that you have towards your mate is being received by your mate and by the power within you. Just like that electron somehow had the consciousness to recognize that the scientist was studying it. It had awareness. Somehow that electron knew it was being studied and somehow that electron changed its path. The spirit, the energy, the light, knows it's within you and it knows what you're doing what you're thinking and doing if you've got anger and frustration if you're speaking negative words over yourself if you're blaming others you're not taking responsibility for what's going on in your life if you're saying it's some disease or some looking for some answer outside of you you've got the wrong idea you've got to live with integrity it means getting in alignment with your soul. Your soul, your spirit, you've got to get in alignment. You've got to realize that you are your soul, your spirit. That is what you are. You are an all-powerful being, an infinite being. There's no, nothing to fear. You don't have to worry about death. 
Don't have to worry about having no money. Don't have to worry about your relationship being alone. You don't have to fear being alone. You don't have to fear anything. You need to focus on what you want to create. You need to think and speak and talk about where you want to go. You need to clearly define the action steps in order to get there. That is getting your life in alignment with your spirit. You need to live with integrity. You need to stop the things that you're doing that are not in alignment with peace and joy and happiness and love and freedom because these are the things of the spirit. These are the energies of the spirit. This is where you need to focus. And let's finish off our program, bringing ourselves to our most important space, the spirit energy that is within us. Let's get into alignment with it. Let's direct that energy out into our life. We have a system, we have a method to heal and change our body and life. You need to believe that. You need to know that. You need to practice that in the morning and in the night. This is how your practice goes. Get yourself in a comfortable position sitting, laying down, however you like. In position, with your eyes closed, let's just start by watching our breath. So tuning out what's gone on today. Shutting down what you have to do tomorrow. Letting go of anything else you need to do tonight. It's called taking an act of refuge. We're just saying, for this moment, we're just going to put it all aside. And we'll pick it all up again tomorrow, if you like, or later tonight, if you like. But just for this 15 minutes, just for this 15 minutes, can you let go of the theories? Can you let go of the things you've been told? Can you let go of the reasons why it's not possible? Just for the next 15 minutes, can you just say that, you know what, just for this 15 minutes, anything and all things are possible. And that's the space you need to go to. I need to go to the space inside of me where all things are possible. And I do that by getting out of my ego, getting out of my mind, getting out of my emotions. And I do that by watching my breath. And all that simply means as I watch it come into my body, so I feel my body rise, my, my body stand up taller as the breath comes into my body. My spine extends as I breathe in. Feel the spine get taller. Feel the belly maybe expand out. Just watch it. Hold it inside for a minute, not forcing allowing it to be inside. And let it go. And watch it leave slowly. Mm -hmm. 
And as you watch it, see if you can focus on nothing but the breath. So if you notice yourself thinking, see if you can just table that thought for a moment and come back to the breath. If you can watch your breath and not think, you can come into the power of this moment. You can come into your true power. If you can learn to focus on the moment alone, you can develop the power and awareness that you need to change your life. This is the truth. The truth is you need to return to your power. You need to begin to use your power. The truth is that you can use and move and direct your power. Sitting up straight and tall, Breathe in deeply and hold that energy within you. And when you breathe out, breathe out slowly and gently. Feel tension leave your body. Now, watch your breath and listen to me. Realize that the power of creation, the power of God, the spirit of God, the power of light is within you and all around you. God is omnipotent and omnipresent inside you, outside you, all around you, all the time. Realize that you are a part of all of that energy. That you are connected to the energy that holds the universe together. And that when you realize this truth, you will eliminate your boundaries. You step, begin to step outside of your boundaries. These are the thoughts and words that you need to escape the limited thought that you're in. Now understand that up above you is the heavens and that the light that comes down from our sun, that comes from the stars or other suns, 
all of that light is energy. Understand that that energy is coming down from the sky. It's coming down and raining that energy on you. So as you sit here, realize that you're being bombarded with loving, light energy from galaxies far away. You're being nourished by the sunlight, by the foods of the sun. And recognize that inside of you is light energy as well. So that there is a source of light energy within you and there is energy up above and all around you. Realize that you can lift your energy with your intention. You can intend to lift your energy upwards. But your energy can actually just be blocked. And it can be blocked by the things you're thinking and saying and the emotions that you're feeling. But realize with skill and practice and understanding that you can learn to unblock your energy, to raise and lift your energy upwards. You can elevate your energy. You can connect your energy with the infinite energy above and around you. Realize that you can lift your energy up from your solar plexus, from your belly, up through your heart, up through your throat, out through the crown of your head. You can lift your energy up to connect with the energy of the universe above you. can connect yourself to the energy of the universe. And that can be an intentional thing. That you do. As that energy comes down from the universe and enters into your body, fills you up, you may feel that light energy entering you. You may feel your energy connecting with it. And 
you can power yourself up like that in the morning or in the night. That is a choice that you have power and ability to do. And understand that once you've connected yourself to that energy, if that energy is pure white light. See that pure white light coming down from the stars, from the sun from the universe above you, coming down to the crown of your head, aligning your energy, connecting with you. Imagine that energy shining out from you. And imagine what color it is when it leaves you? Is it still pure white? Because the energy that comes down from above is pure white light. And if you put out pure white light, and pure white light will be reflected back to you. And if you're putting out anything else, that will be reflected back to you. You have the power to change your energy and your reflection. Everything you need has been provided to you inside of this program. I hope that all of you will give it your best shot. That's where I'm going to leave my six weeks to success. And I'm going to say if you have any questions about the nutrition, the exercise, or the program, please send me a message. And I'll be asking you for some feedback this week. And I'll be asking for a testimonial maybe about your experience thank you for participating all the best to all of you good night <laughs>